Museum exhibits, parades, special events, all of that has been part of the celebration of the LGBT Heritage Month here in Los Angeles. Well, things are going to look a little different this year. I'm sure that doesn't come as any big surprise. However, there's a lot of good news. And here to tell us that good news is from the 13th District, Councilman Mitch O'Farrell. Lovely to have you here. Thanks, Maria. Good to join you. The Pride Parade, as we were talking about earlier, literally started here in Los Angeles 50 years ago. This is a big year for the celebration. It's, it's, a, it's the most important year ever of any Pride celebration that we've ever had because it's the 50 year anniversary of the very first Pride Parade anywhere in the United States. And it kicked off at the intersection of McCadden and Hollywood Boulevard in the 13th District on June 28, 1970. Wow. And that obviously demonstrates there's a lot of history here. And I would imagine that there was a parade planned. Oh yes, there was so many things planned. We're gonna have some virtual celebrations, including a virtual parade with Christopher Street West and the organizers. Even though everything has to be done virtually and nothing in person, we wanna celebrate as never before. We wanna have an event every single day in the month of June. And it's really important for your district. I mean, because of the fact that the first parade was there, but I do want to talk specifically about how you were pivoting into seven categories of wonderful things that are going to be happening through the month of June. All right, so let's talk about flags. So there are so many pride flags. It's not just the rainbow flag that we all know and love and you know, it just brings a smile to our faces when we see. It's really dozens of flags. There are flags specific to lesbian rights and pride. A flag specific to Two Spirit, which is Indigenous and Native American. And it just runs the gamut. So we're going to have an education uh, about the flags all through the month of June on one specific day every week. Okay, so then everybody can find, you know, as you put it, their tribe. Their tribe, that's right. And uh, I'm of Native American heritage, so uh, finding one's tribe has special meaning for me personally. and. Mm -hmm. And it really is something that's important. We're social animals, we're social beings. So it's important in life, no matter if you're in the LGBT community or not, to find your tribe, who, you're, you know, who your people are, and who you feel comfortable, and what you have most in common with others. It's our family, it's our tribe. Nice sharing. All right, films. There's always a film component. We were talking about, you know, there would always be these great movies that were available for people to attend and to, to learn about and things like that. We are all watching a lot of films, but yeah. I imagine that you have a very specific repertoire of films that you're going to offer. So I'm a film buff. For the last six summers, I've had a film festival at Echo Park Lake, and we do screenings with different themes. So uh, now, in the month of June, We'll do LGBT-oriented fun films like Cabaret or Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. I mean, fun LGBT-spirited uh, films that people can enjoy and hopefully exposed to a whole new generation of folks who haven't yet appreciated these great movies. These are really, really poignant stories. Okay, I don't know what this means. Fighting Proud. All right, so part of the culture of gay pride, LGBT pride, is honoring those who fought for visibility and civil rights and equality. So we have a long history of honoring those who fight. Um, and so we wanna honor the pioneers. We wanna honor the pioneering spirit. And we want to make sure that it is relevant uh, to, to, to today's young LGBT community. The black cat protests, when the police decided to raid the bar and arrest people for kissing at the stroke of midnight, they fought back. And protests were organized for the first time ever. About 600 people put it all on the line. They came out, they allowed themselves to be photographed. They were in the newspaper. Many of them lost their jobs. Many of them were disowned by their families. But they put themselves on the line for the benefit of others. And that's part of our legacy as well. Once upon a time, not too long ago, it wasn't okay to even be your authentic self to your own family or your employer. So we've made a lot of you know, successes since then, but that could all be taken away if we don't remain visible and tell the stories. So that's, that's what Fighting Proud is all about. All right, photos. We have an incredible uh, library uh, in Los Angeles. It's the One Archives and they're housed near USC and it is 
really the, they have the largest collection of LGBT history in photos and films and artifacts and all of it's very curated. We've been partnering with them for years and years, all these iconic historic photos. And so, um, you know, photos help tell the story. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna share photos of the last 50 years of pride in Los Angeles through One Archives. There's always a lot of festivities. I mean, as I mentioned, there are museum exhibits you had, used to have at the Hollywood Museum, et cetera, and that can't actually be there this year, but there are festivities. Yes, yes, uh, so the Real to Real is a wonderful yearly exhibit with our friends at the Hollywood Museum. Uh, so we'll have a virtual exhibit, uh, and um, uh, my friend Danelle Dadigan, who runs the museum uh, and her incredible staff, they're still gonna do some curating. Uh, we're also gonna bring in some interviews uh, with folks uh, remotely at the museum that she'll be part of. So um, that'll be another, you know, another avenue of learning and appreciating our history. And Fireside Chats, are they with you? Fireside Chats are with me and some well-known personalities and uh, everyday Los Angeles uh, residents uh, who have stories to tell. Uh, and so the theme this year is uh, pride and pandemic, right? Pride to pandemic because uh, my team and I were reflecting on this pandemic. And, and I thought it was really important for everyone to know that uh, LGBT individuals of a certain generation, my own, have already lived through a pandemic and are living through a pandemic. So I, I think that we can teach people a thing or two about what it's like not to know what you might face in the future. Um, I'm part of a generation that didn't know if we were even going to make it to age 25, much less 30 or beyond. I got to live through it all. The vast majority of people in my generation aren't even here today to tell the story. So that responsibility falls on my shoulders. So I encourage everyone who's interested to share stories of survival through AIDS into the COVID-19 pandemic there's a link and there's something that we can share that might just help people. There was such an outpouring of support in the gay community to support each other during this pandemic of AIDS that ostracized and isolated to a certain That's degree right. and terrified everyone. In the early AIDS era, entire gay communities were heavily marginalized. Attempted laws to be passed to make them quarantine away from everyone else. Uh, and it was a combination of angry gay activist males and fierce lesbians who elevated the fight against discrimination, hatred, and fear right. that has led really to so many of the advances that we experience today. If you follow the CDC guidelines, you can protect yourself and you can get through this and you can help others get through it as well. Um, and, you know, allow it to help you appreciate life a little more and, and trust that we will get through this. This is not what you had hoped or expected, but this might actually reach people that may or may not have had the access availability or um, time to participate in some of those live events. What was going to be a really sort of, um, gosh, grand epic celebration because of the 50 year anniversary, has turned into a virtual celebration that more people will have access to now. Well, if we want to celebrate through the month of June, what's the best way for people to participate? Um, pay real close attention to what all these organizations are doing. And you can do that through my office, by the way, cd13.org, cd13.org. Uh, and we will connect you. Look for my social media uh, announcements. And it's at Mitch O'Farrell or Mitch O'Farrell real easy, and we invite everyone to celebrate. Uh, although we celebrate our unique differences in this community, we, we celebrate humanity in general. We're all part of the human race. Uh, so let's enjoy this together. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much. Congratulations on making all these great plans, despite the fact that you wanted a big, loud, joyous parade. We'll do it next year. How's we that will. Sound? Sounds good, Maria. Thank you. All right.